What's up, friends? Glad you're joining me on the Challenging Conversations show brought to you by the Edify Podcast Network. Challenging Conversations is a podcast intended to empower Christians to be bold and not afraid to jump into controversial topics with anyone on any topic, anytime. Now, today we're going to be talking about something regarding UFOs or extraterrestrial or space aliens. And if you look at the belief that many people have had through the centuries, even if you go back as far back as ancient Greeks, they believed and they even worshipped this idea of extraterrestrials among them. And you see that in full display among many of those ancient cultures. And even if you reflect and look at what's happening today, the belief in ET, right, or space aliens is still going strong. And some will even say the ET phenomenon is gaining even more popularity than ever before. And catch this, even among Christians themselves. So on today's podcast, we're dealing with challenging conversations. Perhaps maybe you have had a conversation with a fellow believer at church or over coffee or at your house where you're hanging out in the backyard, the kids are running around playing, and one of your buddies gets into some of these conspiracy theories uh, regarding UFOs. So perhaps you've talked to somebody who said that they were abducted by extraterrestrial beings. How do you respond to these things? Is it in fact crazy for Christians to believe in not just UFO sightings, but to actually believe that there are alien beings, there's alien life beyond our own planet. Matter of fact, if you even look at this discussion, there are many people out there that say it's a major contradiction for people to believe that there is life outside of this planet. But I'm not going to ad- address that that way on the, on the podcast. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus it on three specific things that you can look at that in many ways, I would say, refutes the, this idea that there are UFOs or there's extraterrestrial outside of our planet. Now, the fact is, if you do look at a lot of these different UFO sightings, most of them are hoaxes, okay? So we can, we can put to bed that, that many of these false images or false uh, footage of, of UFO sightings is, in fact, um, a hoax, the vast majority of them. Now, what do you do with some of these unreleased footage of uh, some of our pilots in our Air Force who are flying around and they see these uh, objects that are doing things and turns that no uh, equipment that we know of on the planet can do? Well, we'll touch on that. I'm going to use a video by Dr. Hugh Ross to kind of refute some of these things. But also, when just look at the, the, the popularity that we're seeing among some of these uh, paranormal activities. And so a lot of people in the Roswell community, the ET community, people who, who are summoning and trying uh, to you know take notice uh, or get our government to take notice of, of trying to reach out to life out there beyond our planet so they can communicate with these extraterrestrials. We even believe that we came from them millions of years ago. But when you see these um, paranormal activities, you see the connection of where a lot of these people are spiritual uh, believers. They believe in things beyond just the physical. Um, But what does that really mean? And how does it align to scripture? Because in some cases, Christians who do believe in the supernatural, you find many of them, many of our loved ones, who start falling into not just these conspiracy theories or the paranormal activities, but you can see how they're being misguided theologically in what these creatures represent and what they're all about, how they're communicating and why they're communicating with these supposed extraterrestrial beings. So I want to I want to touch on this, you guys, today because it's been on my heart lately, and there's been a lot of research that I've been doing, and I was thinking about certain guests to have come on, and, and maybe perhaps I'll do that down the road on the podcast. But right now, I just wanted to have this conversation with many of you of our, our faithful listeners, because I've gotten some emails from several of you guys in the last several months. And, and again, just kind of people are curious, but also people who are having some serious dialogue with a brother or sister in Christ at church who says, yes, you would be a fool not to believe in ET or dis, in, in, in space aliens. And they conjure these things up or they the iterations are different, you know, are, are basically the same. If they say we're talking about demons and angels 
and then they, and you you want to use the word extraterrestrial or you know you want to talk about these interdimensional beings they they believe they're all one and the same so i want to make a distinction there because i don't think that's proper theology as a christian and so hopefully as we have this discussion we lay into this that when you're finished with this podcast that you'll be able to not just be emboldened to have some of these conversations, but that you in respect with your friend who buys into some of these conspiracy theories, that you can have a, a reasonable and effective uh, and long lasting conversation and relationship with this person. You know, I have several of them. Matter of fact, I remember I was in a study and an individual just started to get into a lot of these conspiracy things. And so I flat out asked about their belief in UFO sightings and aliens. And of course they fully embraced them. And, you know, he was very respectful. Wasn't saying that I would be a fool not to believe this. He's just saying, how can you not believe in the overwhelming evidence that doesn't just suggest, but points overwhelmingly that there are species that live beyond us and who and on occasion uh, throughout history have interacted with human beings. Now, why are there many people who contend, who argue vehemently that UFO sightings uh, are aliens surveying or monitoring the world? Well, in one sense, if you look at some of the, the sightings um, that we have, again, like I said, a lot of people are convinced by those. Now, the vast majority of people in the public and experts who've examined it have seen them to be doctored up, you know, pictures, uh, footage that people had embedded different images to make it look like it was real. So the vast majority of stuff is a hoax. But beyond that, we also have certain sites throughout history. The Nascau lines in, in Peru, for example, these extraordinary, uh, you know, geometrical designs of animal beings, uh, even some creatures that are unknown to the animal kingdom. And Many people believe that aliens landed and designed these for, uh, you know, human worship. Uh, you have the pyramids in Egypt. There, are, again, you will still have the conspiracy theorists, people believing that the pyramids in the times of Egypt thousands of years ago had no ability to erect such structures. Um, and so they had to have the help of not just extraterrestrials, but also using their advanced machinery in order to build these massive structures or the Stonehenge in England, right? So these are book, their books have been written on these. People have done dissertations on these kind of things. So there are a lot of people who are rationally and historically trying to make the case that we can see interactions with aliens. Now, if you want to go to the great lengths of discussing them in, in regards to paranormal activity, they say, have at it. But what we're saying is we look at history and we can actually see that there are times outside of the natural where we cannot explain, you know, what, what this actually is. And so this is why we are still having the discussion. And this is why a lot of Christians, whether they're consuming a lot of YouTube videos or they're listening to certain podcasts or they're on TikTok and they're in, engaging with people who are conspiracy theorists that are sending out this message and they go on history channel and they have all these different shows you know, talking about it, you know, it's intriguing, right? It, it piques people's interest and it, it never gets dull and there's movies about it and there's documentaries about it. And so people love to talk about this stuff. So let me just jump right in and say, I don't believe um, that there are UFOs. And I think it is crazy to believe in something um, this absurd. The Bible doesn't mention anything of extraterrestrials. Matter of fact, what I'll be getting to in our second point is that the Bible does talk about the spiritual realm and these spiritual beings known as angelic beings and then fallen angels known as demons. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But one of the things I wanted to touch on the first point, when you have a conversation with somebody about UFO sightings, about paranormal activity, is let's look at a scientific explanations. And really this is in regards to these UFO sightings, okay? Because we have all this footage everywhere, even the military is saying, um, you know, that they, you know, they've, you know, shared to the public these type of videos, and a lot of them could be a, they're very alarming to a lot of people. People are freaking out. So I want to, I want to show you guys this this video by Ro, uh, uh, Hugh Ross. He's an astrophysicist, and he is doing an interview regarding UFO sightings. And listen to what he says 
just just about UFO sightings, okay? And this is important to have a scientific explanation, again, with an object that is, a, that is supposedly, you know, in the physical realm, and it's a, it's a byproduct of whatever advanced society, but it's, it, the physicality of it is in our realm, okay, based on the laws of physics. And, see, and, and listen to what Hiros has to say. So what we see in this 1% residual, for example, is UFOs coming through our atmosphere at five to 18,000 miles per hour, but the witnesses never report a sonic boom. They never report any evidence of heat friction uh, behind the UFO. If this was a physical craft coming through our atmosphere, you would get easily uh, heard sonic booms. So for example, when this space shuttle come, came, comes through our atmosphere, you get two loud sonic booms and you see this trail of heat friction. We don't see that with the UFOs, but there's 2,000 documented cases where observers see the UFO going through the atmosphere and it crashes into the earth. And when you go to the crash site, you actually see a shallow crater. If there's snow, the snow is melted. The vegetation is damaged. But when you investigate the crater site, you can't find any artifacts or debris. Again, if it's a physical craft, there would be debris there'd be some physical uh, artifacts that people could pick up. We don't see that. And then what's coming over these new reports uh, from the Navy and the Air Force is these pilots actually seeing these UFOs turning sharp right angle corners uh, or acute angles at five to 25,000 miles per hour. No physical object can withstand those G-forces. It would shatter. So we're dealing with non-physical reality. Wow. Okay, so this is interesting because one of the things that Hugh Ross, again, as a Christian, and again, a lot of people debate, you know, his point of view on intelligent design and about, you know, his rejection of a creation model and how he holds to a Big Bang cosmology. I'm not discussing that on today's podcast. What I wanted to look at with Hugh Ross is notice how he says, look, these quote UFO sightings that even the military again, like I said, has has released to the public, and there's a lot of debate on Fox News, CNN, etc. about what are they, and a lot of people in the public are believing there's life out there, and and do they wish us harm, right? I mean, that's always been the big thing when you look at these alien movies, okay? Um, and like I said, the sci-fi stuff is it's kind of fun and entertaining, but when it comes to our Christian theology, when it comes to our worldview, how are we to respond? Again, this is having challenging conversations with other fellow believers who believe these UFO sightings are in fact real, that they are extraterrestrials. They're space aliens who are, you know, um, inside these these crafts that they have uh, built, you know, on their planet. Um, and they are here to survey, to monitor us. Maybe they are... Uh, watching us and they've been for for quite some time and they are about to attack well the reality is like what he ross says notice is based on the laws of physics these type of objects with these acute angles that they're taking at five to twenty five thousand miles an hour is impossible the gravity force um you know we cannot sustain something like that in this realm so what he ross as a christian what he's getting at later in this interview, which I'm going to bring into our third point, our second and third point, is I do believe. So when I'm talking to somebody who's believing these are to be UFOs, I say, listen, the, some of that footage that we're actually seeing that a pilot in the Air Force uh, and several witnesses, right, um, have filmed and, and, you know, and it was top secret for a while and then they released it to the public. I believe, and there are there are other instances where I've seen activity that we cannot physically explain taking place around the Temple Mount, etc. Okay, there's other stuff, um, but the point is, I believe that to be real. I believe that they did capture something that is abnormal, that is something uh, that is in the physical realm, but that its capabilities defies the laws of physics because, and this is what Hugh, point, Hugh Ross points out later in his discussion, we are capturing at times 
or the in, the interaction with spiritual beings, these inter uh, dimensional beings. Okay, and we would call those angels and demons. So yes, I wholeheartedly believe that there are times where we have witnessed or even captured the footage of a spiritual being interacting in the physical realm. Maybe it's a spiritual battle between an angel and a demon. Uh, maybe it's uh, demons messing around and using this type of influence to continue to strike fear or curiosity to lead people away from God. And that's, that's, that's what I strongly believe when it comes to these kind of things, which leads to a second thing now that we need to talk about. And that is the existence of spiritual beings. So, in one sense, I think the science can explain away a lot of these UFO sightings, but then there's the reality in the fact, again, that some of this stuff is undeniable. And you're like, well, what is it then? If, if we know that aliens don't exist out there, the Bible doesn't mention life outside the, the earth planet. And these kind of, um, uh, you know, spacecraft things we we can't build. Other nations, Russia, China, whoever, they can't do this. Um, it defies the laws of physics. Then, how can we explain this? Well, that's when we start talking about you guys the existence of spiritual beings. And as Christians, that's what we believe. We believe that God created angels, and at one point, the son of the morning star, Lucifer, the great mighty uh, angel, Mary, maybe a cherub, he fell. He sinned against God. He wanted to be greater, Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 20. He wanted to be greater than God. He was cast out with a third of the angels. And we know that some of them were placed into a dungeon uh, during the, that time frame. And others have been able to roam the world uh, in the dark kingdom that is ruled by Satan. And they want to thwart God's, God's work through his people. And God uses angels as ministering spirits to guide, protect us, uh, and to minister to us just like they did throughout the, the Gospels in the Old Testament. You, clearly, we see the point in which Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane and the angels came to minister to him, uplift him as he was not just physically uh, weary, but emotionally uh, he was being tormented. And so God, the Father, had sent angels to minister to his son at that time. And we know that sometimes we entertain, according to Hebrews 12, angels that are among us. So, I, I think when we're having these discussions, when people go the realm of the UFOs, notice what's happening is this idea of turning the discussion on something that does not exist. And again, therefore not talking about spiritual warfare, spiritual activity, okay? So these sightings, they are from a different dimension coming into our realm. So these encounters, again, are not with aliens, they're not extraterrestrial beings that are more advanced than us and have like this divine-like intelligence or character that we are evolving to become. Many people believe that as well, that hold to a form of evolution. Uh, but these are angels and demons, okay? These are spiritual beings that come from a non-physical realm that interact in our physical realm. Now, one thing I do want to point out, when we have in the discussion, in the early uh, church, early Christians did in fact believe that there was life outside of the planet. Now, I'm not talking about, again, spiritual beings like angels and demons. Origin of Alexandria, he believed when they looked, again, this is in the fourth century though, when they looked into the skies at night and saw all the stars, they believed them to be spiritual beings. Okay, so it's kind of a form of what we would see in Greek mythology. So that was very common. Thomas Aquinas in the, in the 13th century uh, you know, he contended that the stars, they were actually controlled by angels. So you're actually seeing life out there of these angelic beings. And so there are those beacons of light out there in space. Well, we know these to be stars, okay? Um, and they're not actual angels. Now, can angels roam about in the universe? Of course. But the light that we're seeing being reflected is not coming from an angelic being, you know, so, so we know that to be the case. But that was a very common uh, practice because of the naivety of early Christians at the time. And we know through science and through our advancement, not just in science, but in our understanding theologically of what we see in scripture, we know that, there, that the physical realm exists. We know that there are stars. We know the Milky Way. We know there are solar system. But as a Christian, we know there's a spiritual realm. And it is very real. 
And God's economy, remember, God is spirit. So the spiritual realm existed before anything else existed, before the physical realm did. So both physically and spiritually uh, beings or realms, that is God's law and that is God's order. Ron Rhodes, a great theologian, said the spiritual world lies all about us, enclosing us, embracing us all together within our reach. This spiritual world will come alive to us the moment we reckon upon its reality. When you look at scripture in Colossians chapter 1, 15 through 17, notice what Paul says. He says, he, that is Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth. Notice visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him, all things hold together. So there are different strata. There are separate rankings that take place in the spiritual realm or that exist in the spiritual realm when it comes to, for example, Satan's demonic forces. And these different forces are operating all over the world. Matter of fact, you can see this in Ephesians 6 verse 12 where where Paul, again, he says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but notice he says, but against, number one, rulers of the unseen realm or the unseen world. Number two, against the authorities. Number three, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness that literally means the rulers of the darkness of this world. These are world rulers, demonic, massive beings who control different uh, geographical areas around the world. And number four, against the spiritual forces of evil and the heavenly places. That literally is the unseen dark world. So these rulers, this first phase uh, or rankings within uh, Satan's kingdom are this supernatural power that have this particular role. Matter of fact, if you look at the Greek English lexicon of the New Testament, they, they refer the rulers as these, this particular role of these demons who control the destiny and the activities of human beings. So they have power, there's authority, there's lordship, there's, there's different type of rulers and this wicked force. So that can look like so many different things. I believe when we're getting into these beings that are appearing within, uh, you know, uh, you know, radar or or being captured out in, out into the skies that are moving the way that which they're moving. I believe that this could be either these cosmic powers, these world rulers that are moving about so fast, uh, or these or they could be a it's a spiritual force of evil that's in in this underworld, this dark world that's unseen to the naked eye. And this is important because if you go back to Job chapter one, when Jesus or when God Himself had asked to Satan, where have you come from? And he went to and fro and through and, and around the world, okay? So you're seeing uh, Satan, you know, he's here one second and gone the next and somewhere else, right? In an instant, okay? So he's not subjected to this physical realm. He is a incorporeal being, fallen, of course, wicked to the core, but has the ability in this spiritual realm, the non-physical to appear one moment here in America and and then be somewhere in Japan in a nanosecond, okay? So he's not restricted to our time and space in the physical world. So this is important for us to understand. You know, Dr. Charles Ryrie, he says that believers, okay, the, 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 the believer's enemies are the demonic hosts of Satan, always assembled for mortal, mortal combat. And so when we're having this discussion and people are making it about UFOs and extraterrestrials, we as Christians, we need to focus on what we do believe and what we know is real. And that is not just the physical realm that we live in, in this planet, but that there's a spiritual realm and they interact with one another. So when we do see legitimate footage of something that defies the laws of physics, okay? So we know that this cannot be a physical object created by mankind. And when people start getting to the realm of discussion of believing it to be extraterrestrials with this advanced technology that's light years ahead of where we're at, 
the discussion is no longer talking about at times these spiritual fallen beings that are appearing into our space to get us to believe something. Okay. Which leads me to my third point that I think that we really need to look at. And this has to deal with the demonic demonic encounters. So remember a lot of times there could be a sighting. Okay. Like we've seen. And if we can validate that these in fact with eyewitnesses, something that uh, is abnormal, um, a lot of times we can chalk it up to saying maybe this is a spiritual encounter. Maybe it was an angel demon interaction. Uh, but in other cases, there's demonic activities or encounters that a lot of people give credit uh, to alien creatures. Matter of fact, there was a guy back in the 1950s, very famous individual. He was famous because his name is George Adamski. He said that he was contacted by alien creatures and he was abducted and he was taken to all these different planets and he was spending time with these divine beings. And these divine beings were teaching him that we as humans have a divine quality uh, in and of ourselves. And he began to write about what he learned from these uh, extraterrestrials, these divine beings. And it basically is a lot of Gnosticism. And it teaches about Sophia, for example, this creature who wanted to create her own race. And, and instead of God, the creator, being a good God that we believe, right? The God of Isaac, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're believing in other life forms that are better. And so in these writings, the serpent actually is the one who is helping humanity be restored and to become good because creator, another creator, in this case being God, has lied to them, has betrayed them. And so I want to show you guys this video now. I want you to listen, if you're just listening to this, to what Dr. Michael Heiser, you know, he had passed away as I'm recording this a few months ago. Um, a lot of people admired and loved him as I did. Um, I was just barely getting to know him, but it was privileged to to learn from such a sharp, bright, brilliant man as Dr. Michael Heiser uh, to continue to pray for his family. But listen to what he says when it comes to um, why these type of things have, um, uh, you know, these kind of stories have at the core of it, demonic influence. There's a little spark of divinity in them because of where they came from. And it's a very old system. It's very self-oriented in terms of salvation. Salvation is not about taking care of a sin problem. It's about becoming personally enlightened to your own divinity. And you can see this kind of messaging in a number of contactee episodes in the history of UFO studies. I think the reason why we get a similarity here or an overlap between alleged ET messaging and Gnosticism is that there is a good part of the whole alien thing, the alien subject matter, that is inherently spiritual. Again, this is a, this is a wide, far-ranging kind of subject, and at least part of it is really about, apparently, spiritual messaging. And who, who's going to be interested in spiritual messaging except spiritual beings? Okay, so you have competitors to God, who have their own kind of message to direct humanity away from the truth. And it's very convenient, again, to use a certain set of ideas, but here we are in the 20th century, okay, with these contactee events. And so I, I view all th this part of ufology as really nothing more than intelligent, demonic beings using old lies and repackaging them for a 20th and 21st century audience. What to a 20th and 21st century person would be godlike? An extraterrestrial. It's very simple. It's, it's an intelligent being that isn't us. It's not part of the animal kingdom. It's so transcendent when compared to us that it becomes a very convenient vehicle. And if you really think about it, alien messaging, U UFO stuff on that level, is really sort of like converting heaven to space. You have heaven without the God of the Bible. You have a transcendent destiny for humanity without any accountability at all. The, the whole question of sin and salvation isn't even on the table. 
but yet you get to keep all the good parts. Oh, we have this great destiny. Oh, we're going to become godlike. Oh, the, the deity is interested in us and loves us and has a message for us and picks some of us to convey this message and make us special. So see, that that's very interesting because when you take accounts like George Adamski and he was contacted by these alien creatures that are just trying to reveal truth to us, and we're divine like they are, and we're evolving to be like them, and they're here to enhance us and help us. And it's drawing us away from God of the Bible, drawing us away from salvation. That, again, we can almost, again, restore ourselves. The more that we evolve, the better we become. And that's what we hope for, and that we can someday be advanced and live on Mars and other planets like they do, and they're inviting us. You see how the discussion can be focused on extraterrestrial and not be focused on, again, demonology or angelology in the con context of scripture and believing there is a God, that there was a fall in heaven among God's angelic forces whenever that took place. And since then, Satan, who tempted Adam and Eve in the garden, has, you know, again, from that point in time, the fall, with his minions, all those different levels from the rulers to the spiritual forces are, you know, gaming. They're going against uh, the tide of God's will and trying to alter that. Just like when you look in the book of Genesis with Nimrod and trying to bring people into the Tower of Babel, into this one world order, to this one system, you know, to not look at that and rather look within ourselves and believe that we are being interacted and we are special, that these, these extraterrestrials, these divine-like creatures, these space aliens are communicating with us. They're more advanced. And if we just listen to them, if we just pursue them, if we just try to connect with them out there, so when you see a UFO sighting and you have somebody who's been abducted or whatever, but listen to how they talk. George Adamski is when his writings are all Gnostic. They go contrary to who God is. They go contrary to what the Bible teaches. They go contrary to what we know about angels and demons, what we know about being saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, at least any one of us should boast. So when you have a friend who believes in this kind of stuff, you have to point out some of these demonic encounters that yes, they're using this in the physical realm and they're interacting with people like George Adamski, just like I believe a demon uh, interacted with Muhammad and, ha and helped convince him to start Islam or like those uh, trances that, you know, Joseph Smith and his wife went into after he encountered what he called the angel Moroni. Even Jesus himself physically appeared. Okay. This is demonic activity. And the last thing I want to point out when we're having this discussion, because this is huge. It's an occult, it's a occult phenomenon. And it's known as the Eurasia book. The Eurasian book is written uh, by an unidentified person. Okay. And this is, this is going way back, you guys, in uh, the 1930s. Okay. So this unidentified person, some people think uh, they, they know who the person was, who was in this trance, um, but a lot of people, they debate, so we'll just keep this person unidentified for now. But this person claimed that he, he encountered a spirit being. Uh, and these spirit beings, or this super mortal celestial beings, or these aliens, they put him in this trance. They were communicating with him, and they used him as a portal. And they were able to download, if you will, information for him to communicate through thousands of pages talking about evolution, talking about the falsities of God, meaning what you guys have believed God to be is false. Uh, Christianity's false. They were teaching about different aspects of history, what we don't know about, or giving claims to what we have discovered uh, through uh, archaeological digging, but then give explanations to what they were. Talking about politics. Uh, they gave different teachings, matter of fact, of even Jesus that run contrary to the Bible. And Dr. William S. Sadler, he transcribed 
this from this man who was in this trance, who was being communicated with, they said, extraterrestrials. Well, guess what? The Eurasia book is nothing but demonic influence. These are doctrines of demons. And this is important for us to understand because a lot of times people be like, oh, man, you know, these, these again, divine beings like George Adamski was talking about in the 1950s. And, and, in, and prior to that, you had the, the Arantia book. It's, it's, it's just a way for demons, you guys. Again, like Dr. Heiser said, repackaging what they've been doing for decades. I mean, all the way going back to ancient Greek. But now with the technology today, they can disseminate this type of information like never before. And so I hope that when we have these conversations with people that even though um, it is absurd to believe these things, I wouldn't say that my brother or sister in Christ is crazy or stupid or absurd or an idiot because they buy into UFO sightings or extraterrestrials or life outside of our planet Earth. Okay, what we are to do and what I hopefully have helped you guys understand on this podcast today is let's look at three things and having these discussions the next time you have them about UFOs, about life outside of our planet. Number one, there are scientific explanations that can refute uh, these sightings, okay? A lot of them, the vast majority of them. And we already said most of these are hoaxes to begin with. People just kind of feeding and trying to get clicks or, you know, trying to get it on the, on the cover of the Time Magazine, whatever the case may be, or New York Times. So a lot of them we know to be hoaxes. But then we got into the second area when it, when it comes to the existence of spiritual beings, that there is a warfare between angels and demons and demons are here to do the work of Satan, to kill, steal, and destroy, to try to thwart God's will, to try to end our lives as, as best they possibly can. And they use that through deception and, and cause us to, to live in disarray uh, and to flounder and to doubt and be consumed by other things than, than what the scriptures teach us, which leads us to the third thing, talk, talk about demonic encounters. A lot of these things that we do actually have after all the other stuff has been proven to be a hoax, we could say, okay, this is spiritual things. This is spiritual warfare that is appearing in the physical realm, okay? Because they are here, they're real. And when you start talking about uh, occult phenomena like the Arantia books and you start talking about people like George Adamski and there's other people I could talk about, people going into trances or abductions, a lot of this kind of stuff, you guys, is demonic activity. And we have to be sensitive to that. And hopefully you could help your friend shift from looking uh, to the UFO sightings and start really understanding, according to Scripture, like we saw in Colossians 1, 15 and 17, in Ephesians chapter 6, 12 and following, that there's we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against these principalities, these rulers, these cosmic powers, these spiritual forces. And they're real. And we need, my friends, as Christians, to stand strong with the armor of God and, and with the power of God and the power of the Spirit in us. We are, with discernment, we are to fight against uh, the, this dominion of darkness. Now, we know Jesus Christ. Here's the great news. We are told in Scripture, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, that Jesus Christ defeated the works of the devil. We're told if you go back to Colossians chapter 2, 2, verses 12 and following, that Jesus defeated, he disarmed the principalities. We know according to the words of Jesus himself that, that Satan is a defeated foe. And he knows his time is up. But meanwhile, what he's going to try to do is he's going to try to deceive and to lead people astray. And one way he's doing that is for our fixation, for us to focus in on extraterrestrial life. So we're looking beyond and not noticing what he's up to. So these are important conversations, my friends. And I hope even if you've listened uh, to this today and, and it helped you kind of work through some of your confusion about UFOs, let us know. You can info, you can send me uh, an email to info at stanstrongministries.org. And I want to thank Edify Network 
that we're able to host this podcast. So make sure that you guys go check out edify.app. Download that app. I have it on my phone. There are great uh, podcasts out there to help you grow in your faith. And if you guys want to know how you can continue to stand strong, you can go to standstrongministries.org. You'll find my articles, videos, and books that I've read to help you continue to grow in your faith. So thank you guys for watching. Until next time, keep having those challenging conversations.